Hi, this is Dr. Thomas Henry Cohane for Mercy College. I am the faculty advisor to Envisage Mercy, the Mercy College Environmental Sustainability and Justice Club. And today we have with us MJ Wilson, who is the co-coordinator of the Zero Waste Initiative at the Hudson Clearwater Festival. It's coming up next week that our students are going to be attending and are going to be demonstrating a bit of their biogas at. And uh, she's also a master composter, master gardener. And recycler. And recycler. And uh, we whisper that, but it's actually no secret. The cat's out of the bag, and the food waste is going into the digester. As we start to let the entire Hudson Valley know that there really is no reason to be contaminating our water bodies, our wonderful watershed, our forests, or contaminating our land with landfills, when all organic waste, and I literally mean all of it, from toilet waste to kitchen garbage, from bones to clams on the half shell or the whole shell, can all be ground up effectively using some kind of food grinder like the Insincorator garbage disposal, which we now have redubbed the feedstock preparation device and the compost companion. You probably have one of these under your sink, but very few people know that this is the secret to making fantastic compost in either a solid form or a liquid form and even liberating methane, biogas, clean burning, real, natural gas, not that horrid fracked unnatural gas that's causing so much contamination. The insincorator is the front line. It's the teeth and jaws of our sacred cow. And the sacred cow can be any size. There's the little sacred cow here, an arty India urban biodigester made out of a brute garbage can with another garbage can floating inside it in uh, clear water, to use the pun. Um, this is uh, a demonstration model that we take to festivals around. It can produce about 15 minutes of cooking gas from yesterday's kitchen garbage every day when it's in operation. We don't use it indoors because there's no ventilation here, so we use these other sacred cows, which are the Solar City's IBC digesters, IBC standing for International Bulk Container. These are these square white plastic tanks with the metal cage that you see people shipping everything from gravel in to fish oil to vitamin solutions. Whatever goes around the world, these bulk containers that are on pallets are what you're seeing. And they uh, can be had recycled for fairly cheaply. In this area, it's about $165. In California, you can get them for $125. In other parts of the country, as little as $60 on the recycle market, Craigslist. Uh, we got these off Craigslist. And they, uh, they're just filled with water. Their tanks filled with water, and then we put horse manure we got at the Rockefeller uh, riding stables near the Rockefeller State Park, not far from here, and put that horse manure into these tanks the first day, and then sealed them and let them sit and ferment for three weeks. And after three weeks, this sacred cow, or sacred horse, began to fart, and that fart gas was methane, and it was flammable. And as soon as we had that, we had an indication the bacteria were ready to be fed food waste because bacteria don't make animal waste. They live in the animals. They don't want to eat animal waste. There's a misperception about biodigesters that you feed them manure. They make manure. They live in the animal's stomach and in our stomachs and they eat food. And then they make manure. They make fantastic fertilizer, both liquid compost and a solid sludge eventually that can be piped out of these. But that's usually five, seven, ten years down the line. But the liquid fertilizer is absolutely the best uh, in terms of its NPK ratios, its micronutrients. It's got all the nitrogen that is usually lost to aerobic composting. So those of us who've been diehard composters like myself and my family in Germany and MJ who's behind the camera, we know that, that uh, one of the problems with aerobic composting is that you need, usually need to amend it with some kind of nitrogen. Fish meal is usually used. Uh, other sources of protein to get that nitrogen back in. But with an anaerobic process like this, the nitrogen is all there because there's no ammonia loss. And so you're looking at a really perfect solution because it's liquid fertilizer that goes right to the roots of the plant. It can be used for hydroponics, for aquaponics. It can be drip irrigated. And there's no turning, there's no lifting. And the process takes only 24 hours. However, if you use an insincorator food grinder or any other kind of food grinder and you grind up your food, you can still do aerobic composting, which we do suggest, and you can get good humus, good soil, in as little as three to six days rather than three to six months without any of the turning. So there's a lot of good reasons to be grinding. So that's what we consider the teeth and the jaws of our sacred cow. And then this is the mouth up here, and it's just a pipe going down to the bottom. That's the neck and throat of the sacred cow. 
And then there is an anus here, which is where the farts come out, if I can be so indelicate, and we capture the gas in these inner tubes. And then there's these ureters here. Uh, we only are using one, but we have several ways to get the fertilizer out. And whenever you feed it, of course, it pees, and that fertilizer goes in this bucket, and then we have a pump here that automatically turns on and either goes to drain or it could be pumped into the garden. So there's a lot of ways to, to use these. They're very, very simple. Uh, if you were going to try this at home, we don't say we're professionals, don't try this at home. We're professionals, please do try this at home. Um, we put in a carbon monoxide alarm, explosive gas alarm that measures methane concentration. There is no carbon monoxide from these. So biogas will not kill you. Even if you're in an unventilated room, you could run it all day and possibly pass out by the CO2 and the methane, but you wouldn't die. It's not carbon monoxide, no affinity for red blood cells, the problems of running a car in your garage. So it is safe. We're not worried about that. Explosive gas, the concentration would have to be really, really high for us to even worry about that, even in a room like this. Methane is lighter than air and quickly disperses and goes through all the cracks and stuff in the ceiling and is gone. These don't produce enough gas in a day to even cause a hazard, but if we stored, say, uh, enough to burn on a, a burner for several hours, and that got sabotaged, if a student came in and released all the gas in the room, we still would feel okay coming in lighting a match, because what would happen is it would just burn off very quickly. But we have the alarm just in case. We want to be perfectly safe about this. But it is the safest fuel we've ever worked with. And I'll give you an idea of that by taking the pipe off of the gas production here and closing that. Now this is open, and there's the inner tube filled with methane. Uh, let me grab this, and I'm going to turn off the light. I'm just leaving that open. Let's just show you how safe it really is. And I'll turn off the light here, and it gets pretty dark. And I'm turning on the, uh, the, light, the lighter, and you can see, there it is, there's the methane that's burning out. And of course, because I'm not squeezing on the tube, so you can see, okay, so We've got methane, and it's just having a hard time getting out and getting the right oxygen ratio, but you can see it burning there. So this is the same thing that you're burning in your stove when you're, um, when you're cooking. It's a beautiful, clean flame. There is absolutely no smoke whatsoever. It's very hot, but very safe, very tractable. And uh, as you can see, you can even, what we were thinking of doing at the Clearwater Festival is wearing our inner tubes filled with biogas and roasting marshmallows, which is what we were doing at the Sunplug Festival in Hastings. This is not a lot of gas in here, so this is going to keep going out. But it, it's a neat sort of thing that, you, you know, got flame. Here you are. So a lot of fun that can be had. And you can uh, put your hand and see that it's, um, it is methane. And it's the stuff you're cooking on. But uh, a really safe, really cool gas. You can see there's no odor. You can smell that, I think. You can't see it. Uh, no odor and absolutely no smoke, no carbon monoxide. It's releasing carbon dioxide and water vapor, the only byproducts. No radon, as when you're doing fracking. Um, no drilling, no, uh, no contaminants no sulfur dioxide, uh, acid rain. It's such a, a clean fuel. It makes us wonder why everybody isn't creating. This is from cafeteria waste here at the college. So why on earth, until the world is free of all organic waste, when there's no longer landfills and there's no longer anything that is being, uh, that's being trucked away and causing flies, rats, uh, all sorts of disease vectors, no cholera, no typhoid. If you put all your toilet waste and all of your kitchen waste into a biodigester, this is what you'd have to generate electricity, to run refrigerators, to run lights, to cook with, to heat your home, to run your Prius if it was a natural gas hybrid. There's so many ways to use this incredible fuel, and it's as if America has yet to really wake up to the potential of this, but this can be done in your own home. It's very, very safe. I'll turn the light on again. But, um, and very local. And very local, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, you can imagine, of course, when the lights are on, it's so clean burning and so, you can't even see the flame. It's, it's there, but it's really hard, hard to make out. It's a clear flame. And what we're going to do with that, and I'll let it go out for a second, 
and show you that we have here a power pot and the power pot is a device that takes that heat and turns it into electricity. It's a Peltier Seabach device and I'm going to have to put some water in it. Here and wait if I just did I just drop the there's this and there's this. So imagine I plug this in and then I grab close the valve here and then let me put this like this. Put this light and then I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here. on the floor. So, as I boil water, I should be able to turn on these LED lights. Let's see if I have enough gas left to do that. This slide. Put this like this. Down, just like this. Maybe, uh, let's see what I can do here. So we would normally at a festival we have one student holding the pot of water and one student carrying the gas. I wonder if I can keep this lit as a single individual. This is a very low amount of gas. We should be able to get to get this thing to light. Keep staying right. Come on. Depends on the temperature of the water, but it's going to go on eventually except that I've got a surface that's drawing the heat away. I wonder if we could... There's no way for me to hold this. Maybe you can hold it in this hand? In there? I'll try to get this going. And it usually takes about 30 seconds or so. Let's assume I plugged it in the right way. There you go. Okay. You can turn the camera over there and you can see that we're generating electricity from the power pot. Gas just went out, so the light's going to go out. Put the light up by the inner tube so you got black. You got it against black so it's easier to see. Yeah. So there you go. Electricity from biogas, from kitchen garbage that is boiling water and every time that you're cooking on the stove you can be generating electricity to charge your cell phone. This has a cell phone adapter to charge cell phones. Your camera, run the lights in the kitchen, all on yesterday's kitchen garbage. And so there's really absolutely no reason why anybody would be throwing kitchen garbage in the garbage. It's only waste if you waste it's, it. It's only waste if you waste it, exactly. So I think that's, that's the kind of thing that, uh, that we love to show is how simple, how safe, I mean here I am standing with an inner tube filled with biogas that was made from kitchen garbage in a simple IBC tank and I'm, uh, I hope, can you see, even see the flame down there? Does it show up at all? Is there flame? I see the flame out of the nozzle. Yeah, that's all there is. Okay. The flame out of the nozzle, the blue flame. Yeah, okay. so... That's, uh, there, you, there you have it. It's uh, a very cool thing that uh, people don't realize if there's a hurricane like Hurricane Sandy, if we get hit again, if you're in a slum or a favela like we're going to be building in, in Rio de Janeiro and, uh, this summer, 
Uh, we've worked in the Jane Goodall Institute in Tanzania to stop deforestation. There's no reason to be cutting trees down for firewood or charcoal just to boil water. Uh, there's no reason to do it to heat water for bathing when uh, we've been showing people that they have enough organic waste that they can be having this clean, burning, very safe flame. No smoke, no women and children dying of indoor air pollution. You know, 10,000 women in Nepal die every year from respiratory ailments because of cooking fuel. And then there's garbage piling up in the streets and causing diseases. Materials. Materials to build these things, you mean? No, it's not garbage. Oh, right, there are materials, right. There's materials, materials building up in the street. So I think that, that's a pretty, um, pretty good illustration. Thank you for holding it. If you could put that, that down and it'll and cool itself off. That's the sort of thing that, that we'd love to introduce all over as Envisage Mercy, the Environmental Sustainability and Justice Club. We have Yellow Ribbon students here who've come back after serving in Iraq, have come back after serving in Afghanistan. They've served their country with a gun. Now they want to serve their country by eliminating all waste. So they want zero waste to be their, their mantra. And then to go and cooperate with people around the world to share as they're highly trained, but they were trained in a different way of uh, security. They were dedicated to a different way of getting fuel. That's right, a different way of getting fuel. And the students who come back from Afghanistan and Iraq who are in our program or in the club are looking for ways now to provide true homeland and international security at the home scale and the home level with a fuel that every home produces. If you've got toilets and you've got kitchens, then you've got the materials to make clean burning biogas, which we can run in electric generators. If uh, we can get out of one of these tanks every day enough gas to run a generator, a 2 kW generator for 45 minutes a day, which would be enough to charge all your batteries to get you through any kind of emergency. With two tanks, you've got about an hour and a half of charging potential at 2 kW. So it's a type of solar energy that we believe in because it is available come rain or come shine, night or day, 365 days a year. And this renewable energy will only run out when we run out of what we're now calling waste materials. And if that day happens, then it means that we're not here because we're always going to be having toilets and we're always going to be having food parts that we don't eat. Uh, that's just the nature of nature. So your banana peels, your avocado peels, your pits, your seeds, your stones, your shells, all of that is what the bacteria that live in here want. And they will do the lifting for you. They'll do the heavy work. It's the low-hanging fruit. So thank you very much for joining us. We're part of the Greening the Blue campaign uh, in the United Nations. And as you can see, I was there. That's my name, Dr. Thomas Cohane. there presenting in Baghdad, Iraq, last month. And we did a live demonstration of the biodigester that the UN is now using to produce fertilizer and power their new gas barbecue. It's working in Iraq very well, and it's working uh, with our colleagues and friends in, uh, in Israel, in the Palestinian territories. We've got a guy who uh, we haven't visited yet, but he's building one in Syria to help with his, um, because the civil war is going on, to help provide uh, fuel and fertilizer for his community. We're on Facebook with him all the time. We've got a Facebook group. You can join Envisage Mercy, the Environmental Sustainability and Justice Club, and Solar Cities Inventors and Practitioners of Biogas. Look for Solar Cities Biogas. They're open groups. We welcome you to join us. And thank you very much, MJ, for coming by and bringing us some great new feedstock, which we're going to test in the incinerator right Com now. Compliments of Sheldrake Environmental Center. Compliments of Sheldrake Environmental Center. We look forward to working with you. Thank you.